Good evening and welcome everyone to the Following the Way of the Cross broadcast. I am Pastor Byron and we thank you so much for joining us on this Friday evening and we are getting ready uh, to go into another study, uh, continuing this study rather, uh, in the hyper grace era. And uh, before we get going tonight, I do want to introduce my special guest. I've got Minister Felix Armanza with us tonight as always. Praise the Lord. It's wonderful being here, Pastor. Amen. And i got my wife, Heather, with me here tonight. Hey, everybody. Praise God. And, um, you know, camp meeting, guys, is right around the corner. It and, is. Uh, and amen. It's, it's, it's catching up with us pretty quick here. <laughs> yes, Lord. You know, we've been looking so forward to this event for, for such a while since the last camp meeting we had mm -hmm. over in Queen City, Texas there. And, um, you know, it's it, there's nothing like gathering together. Uh, with a bunch of Holy Ghost filled uh, uh, people and individuals when the God's people gather together and the spirit begins to move it's just a great great time in the Lord and we're just looking so forward to that Amen. Amen. and um, before we get going tonight too as well I want to make available you know we've been discussing uh, this hyper grace error and I want to make mention of uh, this DVD that has recently come out this is called the danger of false teaching and this was a message i think we preached here about a year or so ago and um if you're ho if you're in radio land this is a uh, a white cover dd dvd you can go on our website and see it there down at the bottom of our product page but uh for any donation at all we just uh we'll send you one of these uh, doesn't matter what the donation is. We'll send you a copy. Uh, but we want you to have a copy of this, ladies and gentlemen, because this really goes into great detail of how dangerous false teaching can be. And, and this is one of the reasons why uh, we're continuing. I felt led of the Lord today uh, to continue uh, this conversation that we've been having, uh, guys, on, the, on this hyper grace era because it's really... Uh, as I see it, it's one of the most dangerous, dangerous uh, doctrines there is out there uh, because it uh, brings to the table or the forefront anyway for sin to be excused. And there's um, when you get into excusing sins, uh, you're, you're playing on dangerous ground. My Lord. So uh, before we go tonight, uh, Brother Felix, you mind open us up in prayer tonight? Lord Jesus. We thank, thank you, Lord, you, for Jesus. this opportunity you, to come before you and proclaim God's word. Thank you, Lord, Lord that Jesus. there is truth found in the word of God. Amen. That in spite of <clears throat> this effort that is being made, we know that God's truth will triumph. Because, Lord, we're looking to you, knowing that you're able this day. Yes, you're Lord. able to make a way even in the midst of false doctrine. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you thank and we you, praise you, thank you in Lord. the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Whenever, uh, if you got your Bibles, I tell you, let's, let's open them up to First John tonight, if we will. And, um, you know, one of, the, one of the main arguments, and we're going to kind of rehash... Uh, just some things tonight, but uh, open up to First John chapter one uh, once again. And uh, for the sake of time, I will just briefly cover uh, why we have been in the first chapter of First John. And uh, the reason that is, guys, is because this is uh, really the only ground that they try to stand on, if you will, is this First John one and nine. Um, where the Apostle John uh, would give the instruction. He says, if we, speaking to believers, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And, and they claim, uh, guys, that this chapter of 1 John, chapter 1, uh, in no way, shape, or form can be written to a believer in Christ. Well, let me just say this about that. The whole entire Bible from cover to cover is written to a believer. Amen. The word repent simply speaks to an unbeliever. Are you with me tonight? Uh, just the word repent speaks to unbelievers, but the whole Bible from cover to cover, uh, we can go through several scriptures here. Um, 
in verse 7, but if we walk in the light. Now, how in the world can that be speaking to an unbeliever? My if Lord. we then walk in the light, the we, the little pronoun there, once again, we, it speaks of uh, we as the church, the believers in Christ. And uh, several other verses, as these opening verses open up, it just speaks directly to the believers. And, and another thing that, uh, and really, you know, guys, uh, the, the, the danger here that I see and the difference between us and them is, number one, there is a danger of when they say, well, uh, sin does not have to be confessed before the Lord when the Lord shows you. That, that, that's a danger. And, and really, uh, I've even heard their argument at one place say, well, you're not really trusting in the Lord if you confess sin. Uh, I've really heard that argument as well. And the other difference is that there is no progressive work going on, that there is no uh, progressive sanctification taking place in the believer's life. Um, you know, just by personal experience, um, I know that in the past I have had an anger problem. I've had uh, problems, uh, as all of us have in our lives, different proclivities um, that we have in our, our, our walk with the Lord. And I have always been one to take those before the Lord. I just felt it was right to take those things before the Lord that I was doing that was not pleasing to him before him when the conviction hit my heart. And understand the Lord would always help me with those things. And, and he would always work on my heart. And, and you can see just by personal experience that there is a progressive work going on, Heather. You know, I think it, it, at times it feels like we're beating a dead horse, but there have been people that, you know, have continual questions. There's been, you know, we're the ones getting the questions and, uh, you know, people hearing and watching our broadcasts and they still don't understand. So repetition is a good, a good teacher. Um, you covered the, uh, the, the first John thing. Um, you know what I'm finding is for any false doctrine, what is what is prevalent is that um, you'll see people pick and choose. They cherry pick scriptures um, to both fit their doctrine or to uh, deny the truth that says their doctrine is wrong. Um, you know, I, I remember hearing one of the hyper grace teachers saying, I can quote you 39 scriptures that say that all of our transgressions and iniquities are forgiven all uh, and they'll pull from the new testament and the old testament um, but if you were to bring up say david uh, king david where he was speaking in psalm 51 created me a clean heart O god and yes, renew a right amen. spirit amen. within me um, you know he would say well that's old covenant david's under the old covenant contraire mon frere because if you go to, um, I believe it's in Romans, where it's spoken of uh, justification by faith, Paul brings up David, who said, blessed is the man whose, whose uh, iniquities and transgressions are forgiven, whose God will not impute sin. Um, they love to quote those scriptures. But and, and David was the one that uh, had first written that yeah. by the hand of God. And, uh, you know, so they'll it, where it where it it fits their doctrine. Yeah. And when we come to, you know, first John, where it it refutes their doctrine in the fact that, you know, uh, it's saying that we should confess sin. You say confess. And I know scripture says confess. Um, I like to say acknowledge yeah. known sin. When the Holy Spirit reveals sin to us, something in our lives, they'll say that the Holy Spirit doesn't. That's another thing. There's an argument for everything. Wouldn't you rather be right before a just and holy God? Absolutely. And when, not if, but when that thing comes up, to simply bring that before the Lord in complete reliance upon His mercy and His and grace. Just ask for help. Yeah. He says that we're able to come boldly by the blood of Christ before the throne of grace in our time of need. Well, I would think any time that something like that would pop up, to me, that's a time of need. You know, the, I need your help, Lord. Heather, the, the thing of it is, is, 
you know, we're, we're broken and fallen people. We are a, we live in a totally depraved body and this, we need help. We need God's strength. We need God's grace in our lives. And um, we need, there's, there's things that he wants to uh, do in our heart. He wants to produce what? He wants to produce the fruits of the spirit in us. So that right there, just by going through the book of Galatians, when he talks about that in chapter five, the fruit of the spirit, listen, what are they? He's producing meekness. He's producing love. He's producing kindness. He's producing temperance. He's produced all these things that the Holy Spirit is doing. What their argument is, is there's none of that going on, correct? My Lord. They honestly, they don't address it. Any progressive work, and you don't have to say it's progressive sanctification. You can word it however you want. But the truth is, when it comes down to it, we have real trials, real sufferings, real struggles and persecutions in this life. Um, we live in a fallen body in this life. We have sins that pop up in this life. And yeah, right. on the flip side of that, and I've said this scripture before, but I'm going to say it again. Philippians 1 and 6. He says, he which hath begun a good work in you right, shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That speaks of something that he had finished before the beginning. Mm -hmm. That he has begun it in you. When? When you began to put your faith in him. And he's doing a continual work until the day of Jesus Christ. That speaks of past, present, and future tenses. Um, all one in Christ. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, that little well, that little phrase right there, perform it until. Just that little phrase right there teaches us that he's going to continue to perform something in us. Amen. And it's a progressive work. Brother Felix, what you got over there? All right. I wanted to go ahead and look at the phrase again uh, from First John 1 John 1.9. It says, if we confess our sins, mm -hmm. if, it, if it's telling us that we're confessing our sins, this pertains to acts of sin, right. meaning that we're going to be committing sin at some time or at some point. And what we need to recognize is that when we do sin, we need to be in agreement with God about that sin. That's right. And we need to recognize that it's God who's being offended. Yep. A related idea is the, the word confess itself lets us know that there should be a constant attitude on the part of the believer towards sin, I and agree. it should be one of a contrite heart. Totally Where have agree. we heard that? I Psalm totally. 51. Right. And, and um, we as individuals... Uh, I want to go ahead and mention, uh, you know, what is it that we're supposed to do? We should desire to have the Holy Spirit point out those things that are wrong and recognize that it's only the Holy Spirit that's going to be able to pull those things out of our life. There you go. So that, you know, we're going to confess them to the one who, as you mentioned, is going to forgive us, yes. the Lord. So that when something does go wrong, the Holy Spirit will convict us. And that goes, that leads us to uh, John uh, chapter, the Gospel of John chapter 16 and verses uh, 9 and 10, or rather 8 and 9. It says, when he, talking about the Holy Spirit, is come, he will reprove and convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment right. and then verse 9 says and of sin because they believe not on me referring to israel's rejection of our lord mm -hmm. and of righteousness because i go to my father right. so the idea is that we should confess our sin to the lord whatever it whatever it is because it is a matter of the heart and we want to be in right relationship with the Lord. That should, you know, the fact that, you know, I've sinned, that in itself should be an indication to me, you know, I'm not enough. going the right way. And, you know, I need to address what's going on. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something here. Why, why wouldn't you just want to 
openly confess it and get it over with. Amen. Uh, you know, to 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 go by that, what what are they trying to accomplish by going by that? Just because I confess sin, that doesn't leave me in bondage. That doesn't leave me under condemnation. Just because I, you understand what I'm trying to say. You, you, you see, I mean, what are they trying to go, accomplish by going around the confession principle? Let me be honest just, with just you. Just do it and get it over with and be safe about it. I think, I think honestly, that they are so desperate. Most of these people, I don't know, some of these people, I can't speak for most of them, but some of the ones that I have followed for years um, and recently in in listening uh i've realized that a lot of them were under condemnation they were exactly. in the midst of a yeah. lot of people in yeah. law they were raised in religious churches they were they were not seen they did not see an example and a witness of a a true witness before you know of god um the very scripture that brother felix just brought up in uh john 16 i've heard paul white argue that one my Lord. And state that uh, when he talks about that God would convict the world of sin, that the Holy Spirit would convict the world of sin, that that, that is speaking to unbelievers. Do you see how they twist? They twist things to make it convenient for them as though the whole word is not being spoken to each of us individually. I, uh, you know, Heather, as, as we were... It's cunning. As we were talking on the crafty. way over here, I used this, you know... I've really been on my face here lately, just seeking the Lord about, you know, asking him to reveal this to us. Um, just because there, there's got to be made an awareness in the body of Christ about this. And that's why we're continuing these broadcasts. But if you will, they're literally stretching God's grace. Can I use that word? They're literally taking God's grace and they're redefining it and they're making it what's called hyper grace it's just it's it's being stretched and contorted and twisted into something it was never meant to be the grace of god listen ladies and gentlemen the grace of god is god's strength in our life it is his unmerited favor towards the believer but it was never meant to be taken like it is being taken in this era and being twisted like it is and stretched if you will can I bring up another scripture yeah, go um, that goes in, along also uh, with something that Brother Felix had said in James chapter four? You know, he was talking about Brother Felix mentioned about David. I mentioned something about David as well. Um, this is and, and what they would say is, well, that's old covenant. He wasn't under the new covenant. You know, he was he was under the old covenant and not the new. Um, I think if anybody understood grace in the Old Testament, it was definitely David. Amen. But that aside. Let's just, if we're going to argue um, whether it's Old Testament, New Testament, let's give some New Testament. James chapter 4, verse 6. But he giveth, he who? Jesus, the, the, the Holy Spirit. He giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but gives grace to the humble. There you go. Now, oh, when Lord. you are bringing a known sin before the Lord, you are humbling yourself Amen. in the sight of the Lord. Let me continue. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Step one, if you had one. Resist the devil. You can't resist the devil unless you have first submit, submitted to the Lord. That's right. Um, in fact, we don't have the strength to submit, I mean, to, to resist the, the devil. It's not possible. Um, we can't do that of ourselves. So without submitting to the Lord, there's no way you're going to be able to resist the devil. Um, and he will flee. Here's the part that was on my heart before broadcast. I was spending some time with the Lord. Drop this on my, on my mind. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn. And weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Can I say, let me, let me interrupt you a second because Go ahead. I think that um, uh, this mindset that goes along with this um, is also going to produce a lazy Christian. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. the, the, the prayer life will eventually diminish. The, uh, the work of the Lord will be set aside. Uh, there will be no reverence 
for the Lord? I mean, you, do you see where I'm going with that? That kind of mindset of God's grace covers everything will lead uh, to somebody that is just plumb lazy in the Lord. Are you with me? I, I mean, it's difficult. I'm not trying to, to say that uh, legalism is involved here, but listen, when you have a true hunger and a love for the Lord, Paul said, the love of Christ constraineth me. It constrains me. The love of Christ, uh, it, it, it grabs a hold of my heart to want to do more for him. Um, so all of our works are brought out, we know, by God's power, by God's grace alone. But this, really, this mindset would just, to me, to me, it would lend credence to somebody just bypassing that extra hour of prayer time in the morning or, or whatever it might be. You, you, well, I do mean, you agree with that statement? Whenever you're preaching against works-based religion, there's always going to be that battle. And I think there's a place, you know, and a time where, you know, some people will lay everything down and they'll stop doing everything because maybe they've been under condemnation. They've been under law for so long. Um, but I think it's the Holy Spirit's job doing that. And once again, that continual work in our heart, he'll bring you to the middle of the road once again, where you'll realize, you know what? I'm not saved because I tithe. I tithe because I'm saved. But you Amen. see, and, and Heather, their argument with all what I just said there would be this. Well, this new grace that I have found causes me to want to pray more. That would be their argument. This new love of Christ that I have found, this... this. In some effect, that's right, though, Pastor. I mean, if you have the right relationship proper faith produces the proper works what you and i are saying is the works don't stop just because um you're you're saved and under grace I you don't get lazy i personally think that their their object of faith is skewed into, oh absolutely it's into wrong, a but... knowing um which is gnosticism uh so uh brother felix go ahead i, I was going to mention uh one of the excuses that's brought out is the fact that this particular teacher was saying that he was confessing his sins all the time and yeah. the excuse is that it made him sin conscious and he was aware of every thought and he believed that there was no more forgiveness of sins and that he had lost his salvation yeah. well where you know where does romans 8 1 come in yeah, there therefore there is now there, therefore, there is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. Do you see what I, what and, I, he's he's trying to overcompensate? And, and exactly. And then a, a related thing was he he mentions that it was a dark and terrible time in his life that he was con confessing sins out of a sincere heart. But then he makes this erroneous statement. He he says, "I was sincerely wrong. The confession of sins did not liberate me." Well, confession of sins isn't going to liberate you. Thank you. That exactly. isn't, you know. That's not the point. And, and it just says, I, I was made so conscious of sin that I almost went over the edge. Well, once again, just as you mentioned, out of his own That's mouth law. comes That's law. The, the condemnation. He went, just, he went right around Romans 8.1. And, and where there is no condemnation to them which are in, in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. You know, the beautiful thing about confession is is that it does allow a refreshing to come in your life. It allows the Holy Spirit to come in once that sin has been dealt with. Sin has to be dealt with somehow. Amen. And it can only be dealt with at the cross. Amen. It has to be brought before the throne room of God and only the blood of Jesus Christ. Faith in that finished work can excuse that sin. Amen. Their argument is that they know that, that sin was dealt with at the cross. Their argument would be, I know it's been dealt with um, once and for all. And they make it kind of like a once saved, always saved. You know, it, it happened back then. He paid for all of them. What part of all don't we understand is the argument I've heard, which is true, all true. But just like that example you gave, what he did was he put himself under law. Do you know Brother Lincoln out in, in Garland, Pastor Lincoln did the same thing with prayer. He prayed eight to ten hours a day, couldn't even have conversation yes, with his sir, wife. Lord, he made he made prayer and, and he was blessed heavily by that prayer time. 
He was blessed when he did it. Mm -hmm. But he did that for months and months. And after about a year, he backslid. And, uh, and got heavily into drugs and did that for seven years until he was, he was thrown into a mental institution when he came to himself and realized, hit his knees and said, Lord, I have got to have your help. I am a mess. Now, you can get to that point even with this, even with the, There's no doubt about I'm it, so Paul. forgiven Amen. that I don't need to bring it before. It bypasses relationship with the Lord. Anything that causes us to not have relationship with Him, well, it's dependence upon self is what they're doing. Is sin. It's the number one thing it that separates. causes it. Sin separates you from the Lord. It's the wall and between And it can you only and be dealt with at the cross. So it ha Listen, so to go a route another way that they're trying to deal with sin is just, boy, you want to talk about hurting Christians. That teaching is going to destroy Christians. Well, because what kind of witness is that? Now, listen, and here's another thing: that stuff ain't going to stand when the trial hits. No, it's not. Tell me about it. No, when, when the when the trial comes along in the believer's life, listen, that ship right there is going to sink, buddy. Tell because tell, it, because tell the it, audience why. It's not founded upon Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Number one, faith in that finished work. Listen, all of the ground is sinking sand. If you're listen, if you're putting faith in anything other than the cross of Calvary, it's going to be sinking sand. Amen. It's just a matter of time. So if your faith so is when the trial hits, and I've got all this sin that is unconfessed in the devil, he's going to keep pouring and pouring that condemnation on me. It's just going to exactly. keep getting more and more heavy until it's confessed. So in their not confessing, or as I would say, acknowledging those sins before the Lord. What's happening is, is the consequences of those sins are stacking up. It's stacking up. Exactly. And Jesus said, come unto me, mm -hmm. all ye yes, that yes. labor and are heavy laden, Amen. and I will give you rest. Praise yeah. God. They, you, can, you can try to bury your head in the sand and look away from the consequences that come with sin. But the truth is, that's, that's a, a load that's heavier than we can bear. And you're trying to carry it on your own when you try to rely on your own knowledge. And we've said it on our broadcast when we've been talking about identification with Christ. We've said you've got to know this, just like Paul did. Mm -hmm. But we're not telling you you've got to have your faith in the knowledge, your, your knowledge and understanding as Gnostics would do. Yeah. That is law. So these people that are, are, are preaching the hyper grace movement and telling you to bypass um, what is actually the grace of God. To bypass that, they're actually putting themselves under law and making themselves twofold more the child of hell. That's exactly right, Heather. You know, whenever you mentioned the word rest a while ago in Matthew uh, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And I think it's important that we mention, and I don't know why this has just been on my heart lately, but it's important that we mention that that our position of rest is not a position of laziness. It's a position of go. Amen. And I am resting uh, through the standpoint of my faith in Calvary, but God's grace is always going to push you forward. Are you with me? It's always going to give you strength to bring forth the work of God. Brother Felix. Uh, a related uh error or mistake that is being stated is they they state that uh, believers live in fear because they haven't searched their hearts diligently enough to discover and confess every sin that they have committed and because they haven't done that according to this false teaching they believe that they must forfeit their fellowship with God and his blessings and you know that's so ridiculous it's the, the 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 line of thinking you know it's like if i haven't you know if i've missed a sin well you know you're putting yourself under condemnation that's why we need the help of the holy spirit he's going to bring it to light what it is that we've done wrong or we may we we ourselves you know without failure may know what we've done wrong right but you know if we're not aware he's going to make us aware but right. yet they're using the excuse and saying oh well you know i You're didn't search my heart 
and you know I haven't confessed everything that I've done wrong well how, you know if we were to go that route you know <laughs> where would we end where, where, yeah. what would be the end point yeah it, it's it, it just goes from uh, ridiculous to absurd well, uh, you know, mankind, uh, Brother Felix, he's always been trying to find a way to sweep sin under the rug. That's exactly what oh, Adam. Lord. That's exactly what Adam did in the Garden of Eden. They were trying to hide from God. Uh, they knew they were in trouble, and um, you know, the the conscience uh, of these believers uh, in this era. The conscience has to get seared pretty quickly Amen. for them to continue in that mess. Are you with me? I've actually been part of that. You know, I've had that experience in trying to follow this doctrine, not realizing it was this doctrine, um, but it wasn't working for me. And I found that after a while, like you said, my conscience was seared to the point where losing my temper in front of my kid and my husband and acting a fool, I wasn't convicted about it anymore. I really didn't care. It's covered in the blood. So then you get to where it's antinomianism. You get to where I can live any old way I want to because I'm once saved, always saved. It becomes license, correct? Instead of, yeah. Gal uh, James 5 and 14. James 5 and 14. It goes right along with what Brother Felix was was saying. What's funny is I never plan I didn't plan any of these, but I just happened to be looking at it as he said it, and it goes right along with it. Yeah. Holy Spirit leading. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if any have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Well, there you go. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. So, you know. That word faults speaks of individual acts of sin. My Lord. You, I, don't, I would love to see how hyper grace people would twist that. I know they've got a twist. They would have to. But... People, when you are listening to these people and following them, beware. Um, when they give an answer so quickly for what seems, uh, when we know that this, this says right here, confess your faults one to another. Does that mean that every single sin that I've ever committed, I need to go tell everybody? That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about when you've wronged somebody else. Right? Yeah. Exactly. But it is speaking of individual acts of sin. You know, Schofield has a note here uh, near this word fault that points to Romans 3.23. So, you know, the, obviously he's dealing with sin in Romans 3.23. Amen. <clears throat> it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's right. My so, Lord. I mean, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now... Paul, in that portion of Scripture, once again, was writing to a believer. Of course. Uh, how in the world could he not have been writing to a believer when he was talking about justification by faith and imputation of righteousness soon after that? Well, and James is clearly in this, he's clearly talking to believers. Yeah. Amen. He's talking about in the church, go before the elders, have them anoint you with oil, and pray the prayer, the prayer of faith, confess your faults one to another, that you may be healed. Yeah. You know, we've had people come in here and ask for prayer, and, you know, they've had uh, this problem or that problem, and we've done the same thing. We've laid hands on them, and with the prayer of faith, we have prayed for them that they would be healed, that they would be delivered from that. Uh, that's scriptural. Yeah. And you know what? I'll tell I've, I've said this before. Um, but that's the person, the person that's willing, that's not going to be like Adam and Eve and put fig leaves over their sin. That's really what they're doing with yeah. bypassing, um, acknowledging sin. It's fig leaves. Is exactly. They're covering it up when, you know, somebody walks through the door and they come in here and they ask for prayer. They don't have to admit to us that they're a drug addict, but if they do, I'll tell you what, that's the one God wants to heal. That's the one God Amen. wants to deliver is the one that can humble themselves that's right. and just ask for help. And that is what his grace and his mercy is for. You know, one of the one of the things I happen to believe, this is just this is just Robert one oh one, throw the rest away, but why did Jesus curse that fig tree? Because it was an improper covering. That's just my opinion. 
But I'm telling you the truth. Listen, when you try to cover yourself with fig leaves, <laughs> that's an improper covering. God slayed an animal and made them clothes, and blood had to be shed. It was a typology of what Christ would do on the cross of Calvary for the covering of sins. There's only one way sins can be dealt with. They have to be dealt with at the cross of Calvary. They can't be swept under the rug, so to speak. And um, that's what I think is very dangerous about this era, is and that sins are being pushed to the side. There's a continual trusting in what Christ has done at the cross. That's a daily, hour by hour, moment by moment thing. Um, our walk with the Lord, my husband has said this this week in Bible study, that word walk means how one orders his life. Amen. Um, it's, it's your fellowship with the Lord. It's not talking about taking one step in front of another, talking about a journey with the Lord. Yeah. And that's a continual thing. So if we're putting our faith in the finished work on a daily basis and a moment by moment basis, wouldn't you think that... Um, Continuing in right fellowship would be the same thing. I mean, I, sh I know that if if you treated me awful, Robert, um, and you said something really harshly to me, I'm not going to end our marriage because of that. But if that goes on long enough, that's going to be a that's difficult a thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's not going to be joy in our marriage. I may stay married to you, and I may still love you unconditionally. That's why I would have to stay. I would have to love you with a, an agape love. But there's not going to be a refreshing and a true joy in our marriage. That is a good example. And and that's the does. same thing with a relationship with the Lord is, um, you know, he's not like us. He's much more long-suffering. He's much more patient than we are. I'm more willing to walk away from you because you don't treat me right but the Lord, he's never going to leave us, never going to forsake us. We would have to walk away from him. But we want joy and refreshing Amen. in our marriage with him. That's right. Amen. In our relationship with him. And if, and if we're offending him in any way whatsoever. It would only be right it, it, to humble it's, yourself. It's only right to humble yourself and, and, and hit your knees and say, you know, Lord, I've been wrong. And uh, please forgive me. And that restores fellowship just by... Uh, us confessing that sin, Brother Felix. I was going to mention in uh, 1 John 1, 9, uh, in, the, in the part of the portion of the scripture that states, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. You know, the idea comes out that uh, the sins of the believer, uh, whether they're in the past, future, or in the present, they have been put away. But they were put away on the legal basis of the cross. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, the forgive, uh, forgiveness that the uh, sinner you know, expresses at the moment that he places his faith in the Lord. Uh, and when, when we look at sin, one way to look at it is, uh, in a Christian's life, it's not something that's taking place between a lawbreaker and a judge, but rather our relationship is that of a child and our Heavenly Father. That's right. So yeah. that's that when right. there is sin, what happens is we're going to grieve our Heavenly Father's that's heart. It. That's it. And that what we need to understand that when, when the saint confesses their sin immediately after the sin is committed, that fellowship is not broken. And, and just the phrase uh, to cleanse makes reference to the idea of a single act of cleansing, mm -hmm. which pertains to the specific sin that was committed. So that the act of cleansing uh, pertains only to that one sin that was committed because everything else has been cleansed. And see, that's the argument that they use. The argument they use is, well, you know, all my sins have already been dealt with. But, but what they're leaving out is, if I do sin now, I have to deal with it. And I'm going to have to deal with it, otherwise... I'm going to be breaking fellowship with the Lord. So to say, Brother Felix, to say that uh, all of our sins have already been dealt with 
would be to also say that you're perfect, right? Exactly. If, so, you're, if you're saying you're, you haven't sinned. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And then uh, I was just going to go just ahead. off no, the top ahead. of my head, I, I was just going to mention the, uh, one of the false teachers mentions that, um, you know, they tell the people, well, you don't have to deal with sin. But yet when one of the leaders of the church, you know, sees that someone is in open sin or, you know, the sin is so obvious the uh, this false teacher says, well, the leaders in his church are going to go to that person and tell that person that they're not under grace because sin has overtaken them. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't have it both ways. Right? They're, they're cherry-picking scriptures to, to suit them. Either you're going to deal with sin or you're not going to deal with, with sin. You know, if, if the person, you know, has been overtaken with a sin and their sin is obvious and, you know, the leadership and the church has to deal with it, well, good and well. But the same <laughs> thing applies to each of us. We have to give, you know, uh, th this is, you know, going back to his original statement that he was under, in, under condemnation because he was having to give an account to the Lord. Well, you know... The giving of the account should be so that, you know, we, we were able, as you mentioned, we're able to rest in the Lord. We're able to have confidence in knowing that we're in the Lord. Yes. And that we're to have an assurance that, you know, when, you know, the Lord comes for his church, that we are in him. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, we will go with him when he comes for his church. Right. Unless we go the way of the grave, then, you know, the dead in Christ will rise first. Right. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up in the air to meet him. Yes. But we have that confidence and that assurance that we're in the Lord. And that fellowship hasn't been broken. That's right. And if I do commit a sin, I need to recognize you know that the fellowship has been broken and I need to deal with it. That's right. You know, we just, um, on our Wednesday night Bible study, we just got through, y'all, going through some of the most beautiful scriptures as it regards our position in Christ. I believe wholeheartedly in our position in Christ and, and how glorious uh, that position is that frees me from that condemnation and i know that i have been found blameless before the lord amen um but we believe in the position of in christ we know that we have identification we have union with christ we have uh been co-crucified with him we've been co-buried and co-raised with him all that is uh, very closely knit together uh, as it regards all the doctrines that flow from Calvary. and But the twist, once again, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that we are trying to take uh, the sins of the believer and just overlook them and, and just don't concentrate on them. My just don't, don't focus on them. Well, you're My right. Lord. You don't need to focus on them. But when God the Holy Spirit shows up and convicts your heart about something, you had better focus on it then, Amen. and you had better take it before the Lord. You know, I was listening to Brother Felix and, and this this um, teacher of hyper grace, you know, stating about the condemnation that he was under. Once again, people that have been under condemnation and been under law, they're so susceptible to this doctrine um, because let's just break it down to a place where it's real uh, I know for from experience I struggled heavily with condemnation so every fault that I had believe me I saw it and I knew it was there and so when I started hearing some of this hyper grace stuff years back I knew it was there too ladies and it, gentlemen. <laughs> it's always Lord. easier for somebody else to see your faults I had to, I had to throw that you in you know it's that's always easier for others to see your faults but when those things come up see conviction is the holy spirit showing you um something that does not line up with his righteousness mm -hmm. you're placed into a righteous and holy environment you were placed into christ at salvation 
And when something's not lining up with that, his desire is that we would grow into the image of Christ. Right. So it's a con- once again a continual work, the progressive sanctification process that they they so willingly ignore. Um, but for somebody that's under condemnation, the last thing that they want is to have to be faced again with all of this list of sins that they keep seeing. What they don't realize is condemnation is of the devil. It's a verdict. It's a guilty verdict. Um, The Bible says, agree with your adversary quickly. Come to that place where you realize, you know what? What the devil says about me is right. This is where I truly started getting free. Yeah. When I realized, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and agree. You know what, devil, you're right. You're accuser, accuser of the brethren. I did lie this time, or I did lose my temper, or you fill in the blank, whatever it is. Right. The, the, the list could be really long. But I have an advocate with the Father. Amen. When you Amen. know Amen. that the problem is, is that grace, that hyper grace teacher and all of these people that fall into so victim to this doctrine, they don't realize what it is Christ really has done. So, you know, you know, I know that he that, would desire we'd be humble and just admit it, it. Of course he does. But, you know, the, once again, ladies and gentlemen, the danger, <coughs> the danger is, um, the, I guess the main proponent, one of these individuals, um, he has such a huge following. Millions. Amen. Millions, Millions of like people Joel. are flocking to this thing. And I thank God for SBN that's taking a stand against it My right Lord. now, too, as well. They've been discussing this topic on the message of the cross, you know, lately, and I have just been eating it up. I have been enjoying it. And, um, you know, the, the, the thing of it is, there's, I thank God that there's somebody that has a, a worldwide platform as well that is making an awareness uh, to this era. So, you know, the, the thing of it is, we've got, to, we've got to, as Christians, we've got to take the whole role. We can't just, just take pieces bits we want. and pieces of the Word of God that we want to, ladies and gentlemen. It all flows through the cross of Calvary. Every jot and every tittle of this word. If you do not read and understand the Bible as it regards what Christ did on the cross of Calvary, you'll get it wrong every time. Let me say that again. You will get it wrong every time if you don't read it in the confines of what he did at Calvary. So, Brother Felix, you got something else? I I was going to... Show, you know, or emphasize the deception. What's so deceiving about this is that statements will be made that are correct. Exactly. For instance, he he makes the statement that once you make the forgiveness of of your sins, your responsibility and maintaining it and maintaining it. um, In other words, following after a law, you're going to fail. Well, that's well, right. We, we, if we make it <laughs> into correct. a law, we're going to fail. So, you know, uh, this is where it's it's confusing. Right. Because some, thing, some things that a are said truth accurate. truth is being used. Uh, another example of that is uh, he says, you know, are you right with God because you confess your sins perfectly or because of the one sacrifice of Jesus for sins that he made for us? Well, you again, know, hey, you know, yeah. because so much truth is being presented in there that people overlook the things that are not sound doctrine. They overlook the false teaching. Mm-hmm. And if they've never had an understanding of the word of God and, you know, with as much truth as as, you know, is being presented, uh, we can see how. The people are drawn in because of the amount of truth that is presented. But then, you know, they're not looking to the Word of God. And and they're not looking to the cross. And I I think what really uh, is alluring about it, and, you know, I mentioned this last week, but these false doctrine always comes with a seducing spirit. Yeah. It always comes with the doctrine of the devils that the Bible speaks about in 2 Timothy 4, 1. 
understand that this thing is going to be real alluring, especially um, uh, to those that are really young in the Lord. It's going to look real good to them yeah. uh, because they find this uh, idea that I don't have to confess sins anymore, that I'm just, you know, all all's well. And um, But there comes a point in time in every believer's life, and it just my personal experience, ladies and gentlemen, I repent every day my just Lord. because I find it a good, healthy thing to do. Amen, amen. And that's just me, but that is the way I walk before the Lord. And um, so you mentioned this earlier, and I know we're running out of time. Um, yeah, we're all out of time. You know, Adam and Eve, when they fell into sin and they became at fault, they went to cover it up, and that lamb. I say lamb, that's how I teach it, but it just says um, clothed, they were clothed with animal, with an animal skin. Um, there it is. There's the example right there is uh, the fault was made. They had finally admitted it to God and God said, no, that's not a proper covering. I'm going to go ahead. Right. And an innocent person, Christ Jesus, yeah. is going to die on your behalf. My Lord. And we should never lose sight of that that's the the power is not in the ability to um confess your sin perfectly or to make sure that you get all of them on that list it's god knows he knows but when he's when he's he's shown you something bring it before him be humble Amen. i mean it, it's it's really simple it doesn't have to be this great knowledge or this great um perfect prayer or perfect confession or perfect anything it's it's just having an honest heart towards god my, my and lord. being humbled and reliant and dependent upon what it is he has done as the payment for that that's right well we're about out of time today ladies and gentlemen uh we uh hope we've said something here tonight that has blessed you encouraged you strengthened you and helped you understand this era of hyper grace with that said, I'm holding up the DVD for, um, this is a message we preached here uh, not long ago. And uh, we want you to get a copy of this in your hand. Uh, there is also, we have out now, Heather, I believe, um, the series that we're doing. In uh, this broadcast. In this broadcast. So I haven't put uh, them on the site yet, but I'm working on it. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can get those too as well if you'll contact the ministry here. Uh, for any donation, once again, we'll send those out to you. And uh, Heather, close us out in prayer tonight, if you would. Heavenly Father, we lift you up thank and we you, thank Lord you for Jesus. this time. And we thank you for the leading and operation of your yes, Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we're asking at this moment yeah, that you would Lord, speak Lord. to those hearts. For those that are thank listening you, Lord, to this broadcast yes, or watching, Lord, Lord God. If there's been people that have been under condemnation, if there's been people that have felt like they didn't need to confess their sins or, or maybe they've just confessed everything to you and they don't know they're free, Lord. We just ask, Lord, that you would continue to show them your finished work, that you would help them in their relationship with you, Father, that you would minister your truth, Lord God, that you would separate them from this hyper-grace movement and the things that are leading people astray, Lord God, that you would make that path plain in their lives, that you would give, you said that you would lead us into yes, all Lord, truth, not some us. truth, but all. Thank you, Lord. That we can just trust in you and rely on you. We don't have to be in fear, you, but we know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. We praise yes, you and we Lord. thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and, and amen. amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we love you all. Remember, camp meeting is one week away. Woohoo! So praise <laughs> the Lord. Be here if you can in Houston, Texas. And uh, we will be coming back at you uh, Monday morning, same time, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Love you each and every one. God bless. Good night.